Hey everybody, Stephen here, and for today's video, I'm gonna show you something that I see at the gym, um, and it's a variation of a squat that I see taught a lot by other personal trainers, um, that uh, I just think there's a better way to do it. Um, for this example, I'm actually gonna use my couch. It's been a little bit harder for me to shoot video at the gym just because at the facility where I'm at now, there's just a lot more noise. And because I can't change the music and all that other stuff, it just becomes an issue. <clears throat> Trying to look into finding a mic that I can do that maybe would be a Bluetooth mic that would help alleviate that so I can film there. But I also still have to wait until the gym is really, really calm and quiet. Um, otherwise, there's just too much going on. But <clears throat> I'm going to use the couch for this. Typically, you're seeing this done with like a Smith machine, a barbell, off a functional trainer, anything that's about this level. Um, and what you're really seeing is that they're having the client, <clears throat> and this is one of those things that maybe you've been taught this, which is why I'm bringing it up, but they're here, their arms are bent, and then they're having them squat back in this position with my arms bent. And it's really the arm bent that I have a problem with, because I'll see it either on here or even worse in my opinion is that I'm gonna see it off of a suspension trainer. So. They're using like a TRX or any other brand name suspension trainer. They're having them hold like this and then squat. One of the big things with that is why am I, if I'm trying to essentially get better at the squat, I'm isolating my arm and I don't do that when I, when I do a natural squat. So my big tip with it is that as I'm here, I'm holding here. Going through dynamic neuromuscular stabilization, DNS and even grip, one of the things that we're looking at is like getting the arms back and levering here so that I can get in this position and I can know where my body would be in space as I kind of hinge back into that squat or if we're working on a deadlift, same thing, right? So as I'm hinging back here and now I can get more control out of my scapula, my shoulder blades, I can control my head a little bit better. I can breathe in into the belly right here versus holding here and like T-Rex arming this position. Now I'm not saying I wouldn't use that, right? There might be a moment where I want, want to get somebody here. I even do it with the pull where we try and get somebody to sit here and we pull in to improve their flat footed squat. We're usually holding on to uh, the squat rack when we do that. But <clears throat> when I'm looking at that position, right? I'm trying to take this and I'm trying to make it more functional for the individual. When I see somebody just do this and they're not doing the other component, which I'm gonna show you here in a second, that's where it becomes more of an issue on my part because if you're only having them squat like that, that's not how they're gonna squat at the house. That's not how they're gonna do. And one of the things that I tell my clients is the reason that I teach this squat the way I teach it is because it's primarily one of those things that you're doing throughout the day. So you're gonna take a seat, <laughs> whether in your car, at home, at the office where you're gonna do that motion repetitively throughout the day, right? Um, ideally, we would be sitting on the floor and in a flat-footed squat and all these other things, but I also understand that you're not gonna do that for the bulk of your time. A lot of times, you're gonna be sitting in a chair. So when we get to the chair, I don't have anything, right? I'm not gonna scoot the chair up here and I'm not gonna go like this and then sit down like this, right? The chair, most likely, or couch or anything like that, is gonna be away from an object, right? So when I'm here, I'm actually gonna to have to bring my arms out as my counterbalance, and I'm gonna sit back like this. I'm gonna reach, and I'm going to stand like that. Focusing on the box squat, so taking the power lifting movement in the box squat and applying it more here, layering on some other things with grip and DNS and some of these other modalities to make it a little bit better Essentially what I'm doing is I'm getting my client in a little bit wider than shoulder width stance to start because it's easier for them mobility wise. We're taking a deep breath into the belly and then I'm initiating the movement by pushing my hips back, right? So as my hips move back first, before my knees bend, I'm going to load the hips up more, right? So we're pushing back, back. I'm reaching out as my counterbalance knees are bending and then I'm going to take a seat and then I'll be tall and upright. When I'm ready to stand, I'm gonna reach out, I'm gonna hinge forward, right? So you're gonna see me bow forward a little bit here, and then I'm going to come up like that. I'm looking for that my toes don't 
lift way up like this, so I'm essentially falling. Most people can handle this, right? The bulk majority of the people that I see, unless they're a medical exercise client, where we have some other things going on, where we maybe have a medialis weakness issue going on, or we have a glute weakness going on. <clears throat> a lot of people can do this. And I teach it like this because like I said, I want them to have the repetitive action of doing this throughout the day where there's structure to it. That way when they come back, I can see that, hey, you're a little bit safer at home or wherever you're doing this. And I'm not put in a position where I'm going like this and using my arm to try and hinge back into this. And I'm relying solely on my arm. And that's what the person is most likely doing, right? If I'm in this position, they're most likely using their arms more so in order to sit back by default, unless you're trying to coach them out of that. And I'm usually not seeing that. I'm not seeing anybody being coached out of that, right? Where they're like, don't use your arms, really just lean back like this. But it's easier if I just keep my arms straight to do that. So one of the reasons for the video is clarification, just because I see it a lot at the gym. But for anybody that's watching, maybe you don't have a personal trainer, maybe you've been taught this by a personal trainer, be conscious of the difference between the two. And I really want anybody to work more on this box squat style where I'm wider, hinging back, reaching and sitting variation, right? I don't want to slouch in the chair. I want to be upright. You might default to this naturally, be conscious of that over time so that you can slowly get here as you sit, right? Because as I go here and I tuck my pelvis, I'm putting more pressure on my lower back. But I'm here, breathing into the belly, reaching and pulling forward. Like I said, it's an action you're going to do a lot throughout the day. Most likely, most individuals do. Moving away from I'm leaning or holding on to something, and you might need that, right? I'm not saying you, you might not. I use a band sometimes too to help them learn and trust the hinge, but I'm never having them hold the band tight like this. I'm always having them hold it at length so that they can reach back and trust this motion because if they're scared and they pull here right they're most likely when they come to sitting in a chair they're going to try to mimic that and they're probably going to curl in on themselves to get closer to center and as they do that now our knees might be coming forward we already have a rounded back so we're putting more tension on the lower back and i'm probably tucking my chin which is affecting my neck as well so something to be conscious of it's something to work on the skill of doing that um, and like I said, maybe you do do this, just be conscious of, we don't want to have the T-Rex arms. We want those arms straight. We want the shoulders loaded. So my shoulder blade is pulled down. My neck and head are in alignment with the rest of my back also. So I'm not doing this thing, right? A lot of people do that. I'm not tucking my chin like this either. We have a good alignment. Easiest way to look at this stuff too, film yourself, right? Go back and look at it and see where you can make some improvements. And that's really if you don't have a personal trainer and you want some insight into what's going on, right? You need to videotape yourself, do 10 reps and then see, hey, what's going on with these. See if you can kind of internally adjust and feel and recognize what's going on, make the correction. And then you'll have an external viewpoint of what's going on when you watch the video. And then you can go back in and you can kind of, like I said, slowly chisel this down and get it to the point where we're, we're really hinging, we're in alignment and we're not T-Rex arming the movement. So that's that. If you guys have any questions, any comments, let me know in uh, the section below. I'm going to try and pump out more of the um, kind of, I don't want to call them corrective based, but essentially corrective based things that I see at the gym here over the next couple months, um, just to make people more aware of this stuff. And we'll get into more lengthy videos also where it's more in depth, where I can kind of break down just even that movement even more for you guys. But if there's anything specific that you want to see, let me know and I'll make sure that I get that out for you. So if you like the video, hit the like button. If you want to continue to follow along with all of my content, hit the subscribe button for me. Thanks so much for watching.